Hi, it's Selena again. And today I'm going to talk about emotional reasoning and how it can help keep clients stuck. Emotional reasoning is basically a cognitive distortion. It's the mind playing tricks on us most of the time because it's based on feelings rather than facts. So, for instance, you feel something, you feel annoyed, you feel a danger. So because you feel it, we tend to believe it. And because we've got that actual emotional feeling going on in our body, we believe it must be there for a reason. We don't consider any of the other options because our reptilian brain is there ready to protect us and keep us safe from danger. So it will immediately respond to a threat, to a danger based on those feelings. But with a little bit of um, practice, we can change these distortions so they become helpful and we don't become as anxious in situations. So what are what is emotional reasoning again? So it's basically, as I say, you if I feel that, then it must be true. So think of some of the things that you perhaps believe and respond to based on a feeling. So uh, it might be somebody at work. Um, they look at me that way, so that must mean they don't like me. I feel bad because I did something, therefore that must mean that I have done something bad. Um, maybe in a relationship, I feel uncomfortable in this relationship. I feel a sense of fear, therefore the relationship is not good for me. So there are many situations where often we rely on feelings rather than facts. Now, don't get this confused with intuition, which is actually different. Intuition is based on what we call our gut feelings. And we're told to rely on those gut feelings a lot. However, gut true intuition is really based on um, considering, a considered response rather than a reaction. And in mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, we teach how to um, move from a reaction to a response. A reaction comes from the reptilian brain, invokes that sudden impulsive behavior, thoughts, and rather than slowing it down and using a considered response. So the prefrontal cortex is responsible for that. And mindfulness certainly helps to calm down the prefrontal cortex so that it's not triggering off the amygdala and causing us to react in an impulsive way. So the next time you get a feeling of um, I'm in danger, now don't get me wrong, if you really are in danger, your reptilian brain will automatically um, make you jump, you know, it'll make you get out of the way or make you perhaps um, hide or whatever it is. It will do that automatically. OK. And then sometimes we might jump at something and then go, oh, it wasn't what I thought. So I might put my hand in a jar and feel something and go, oh, my God, that's a spider or something. It reminds me of something. And the mind has a good way of pattern matching that. And so it will relate it to something else that's similar. And then it will go, oh, I need to remind you of that. This means there must be a spider in there. And so you jump and your heart grows. And then you look again and you go, ah, oh, actually, it's not a spider. It's just a piece of cotton. So how can you calm down that impulsive brain that responds and the causes the emotional reasoning, as I say, which is a distortion, and turn it into emotional processing instead, which is to analyze, to slow it down. And Viktor Frankl taught us that, how to slow down that impulsive brain, because there is a space where we can make that decision. So first of all, perhaps asking yourself, is that true? Is that thought true? Or is it based on uh, an experience I had some years ago or recently? Is it safe? So look around you. Now, I know I may have covered this in other odd videos before, but it doesn't do any harm to repeat again. Checking around, am I actually in danger? Is there something there? 
And you can do this with clients in the session as well. Asking yourself, is this thought, is this behavior helpful? So they can all help. Now, in um, dialectic behavioral therapy, they talk about the wise mind. And that is when we can have the, um, the extreme version of the um, emotional brain, and we can have the extreme version of the logical brain. Well, we don't really want an extreme of either of those. We want both. So we want to be able to use the emotional and the logical brain, if that makes sense. And by tapping, that's how we work. Tapping helps to bridge that. It forms a bridge that helps between those two hemispheres of the brain that links between the left and the right brain thinking, the logical and the emotional thinking. So it's about using the in-between and not being uh, reliant on the emotional brain or overly reliant on the logical brain either. And anger is another impulsive behavior. And anger is a great tool to have. It can motivate us. It can uh, make us do things. It turns into an action. And that can be helpful, especially for clients. Uh, so when they turn from sadness to anger, for example, that's a good sign because sadness keeps us stuck, whereas anger actually is um, an emotion that helps to motivate to do something. So how they use that anger um, is important. So if they can use that anger in a positive way to make those changes, anger is a useful tool. When it's impulsive though, and we react with anger, that is not as helpful. So using anger, considering it, using it to your advantage can be really, really helpful. So again, I think I've perhaps, you know, conceptualized emotional reasoning and how to turn it into emotional processing instead can be um, useful for yourself or for your clients. And I hope you found this one useful too. Thank you for, the, for listening again. Bye.